Okay. Okay, there's the shepherds. I can't see your horse very well there, Trace. Did you get my... There you go. Your my prize mount. What's your horse's name? Or don't... Fred. Oh, hi. Linger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> is that your horse? No. This is Tudor. <laughs> oh. Tudor. <laughs> Over there. And there's the donkey. Yeah, the donkey's at bite. That's Hooter. <laughs> oh, Hooter. Hooter, Hooter. Hooter and Tudor. <laughs> All right, this is for my mom, so you better just stop <laughs> And this is, oh, hey, your this is, shows up really well. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, there's that woman that's always in, in my camera. Yeah. Leave the shepherds alone. <laughs> What's up, bro? You're the spotlight, man. <laughs> That's my hairdresser. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Angels aren't supposed to be down here. You're supposed in to be In harmony with God's plan, everything was wonderful. But our story begins now with the fall of Adam. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, be because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, Woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed you are of all the livestock and all of the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will run your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to your children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. And Adam, because you listened to your wife, and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from whence did you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So the 
the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Man and woman were now thrown out of the Garden of Eden because of sin. Let us go now and hear the Old Testament prophets prophets tell us about the coming Savior, the one who would get rid of that sin for us. Say in the Garden of Eden, people went forth and populated the world. But wherever they went, sin went with them. God's chosen people, the tribes of Israel, achieved many triumphs during this time. But after each triumph came disaster, dispersion, and wandering in the wilderness. Through all these tribulations, God provided for the Israelites' needs, both physically and spiritually. One of the ways God gave them hope spiritually was through the use of prophets. The prophets guided the Israelites through their day-to-day -day existence, but the most important message they gave was that a king was coming, and this king would give man his peace with God. One of the first prophets to speak of this promise was Nathan, speaking to David in 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 16. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish a throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with flockings inflicted by men. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. The prophet Isaiah spoke to the house of David in Isaiah 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there, were, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Prophet Jeremiah speaks of the coming king in Jeremiah 23, verses 5 and 6. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. The prophet Micah speaks to us in Micah 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, Bethlehem, Ephra, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until a time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. In Zechariah 9, verse 9, we hear, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Finally, in Malachi 3, verse 1, See, I will send my messenger, who will prepare the way before me. And suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord God Almighty. All of the prophets were pointing to the coming of a king that would bring peace between man and God. This king of kings would not serve an earthly kingdom, but would be the savior of man and would give man the opportunity to be forgiven for his natural sin. We have heard of how this Christ child would be born in a small town called Bethlehem. Let us go to Bethlehem and see the Christ child. What's this? 
This is the end. I don't believe this really happened. <laughs> 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 oh, it looks so nice. No room in the end, but we can eat. And that's Bill, if you didn't recognize him. Mr. Mutual. <laughs> and we're going over to the city. There's Lorraine. <laughs> it's for my mom. <laughs> When Mary and I were engaged to be married, I found out that she was with child from the Holy Spirit, and I decided to quietly divorce her to protect her honor. But an angel of the Lord had appeared to me in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now Mary and I are both of the line of David, and Caesar Augustus had decreed that a census should be taken of the entire Roman Empire. And since Bethlehem is the town of David, we returned to Bethlehem to be counted. When we got here, there was no room for us in the inn, so we're staying here at the manger. In the days before, Angel Gabriel appeared to me and told me that I would be with child. I asked how this could be, for I had not been with a man. Angel Gabriel told me that I'd be overcome by the Holy Spirit and shall give birth to a son and name him Jesus. While we were here, the time came for me to deliver. I gave birth to a newborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him here in the manger, and we have named him Jesus. Do you have heard how the angels told Mary and Joseph that the Christ child would be born and where to go? Let us go now and hear what the angels have to say to us. There's the <laughs> shepherds again. Now we're going into church. Let us now hear what the angels have to say to us. but refused to defend himself from our insults. 
We even took his clothes and divided them among us. When we nailed him to the cross, I felt we were doing something wrong, but I did not mention it to anyone. As he hung there, he spoke only a few times. In the sixth hour, darkness came over the land, and the curtain of the Jewish temple was torn in two. The darkness remained until the ninth hour. Jesus said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Later he said, It is finished, and Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. It was then that he breathed his last. It was at this point that I felt, surely this was the Son of God. Later, Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus to be buried in his own tomb. The women who came from Galilee with Jesus followed Joseph and watched as their king's body was laid to rest. Earlier, we had heard Jesus' followers talk about how he said he was raised from the dead in three days. So the guard was placed at the tomb to keep his followers from stealing the body. I now believe that this man was the Son of God and came to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament. We have heard that the Roman soldier talk about the tomb, and that's where Christ was buried. Let us go to this tomb. The rock that had covered the entrance to the tomb has been rolled away. And if we look inside, we see that the body of Jesus is no longer in the tomb. But there's, there's someone or something left in the tomb. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men? Be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. The resurrection is important. In it, Jesus defeats the devil. It assures us that he is true God and guarantees our sins are paid for. As God says, 1 Corinthians 15 through 17, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you is the creation of the world. We have now come to the end of our tour. We started at the beginning at the Garden of Eden where man first fell into sin and needed a savior. We found that savior in Bethlehem in the lowly manger. We found that our savior then went to the cross to suffer and die for all of our sins. And now we see, according to the angel, that our savior has risen from the dead and thereby granting us or giving our eternal life is now assured. We have eternal life because Jesus suffered and died for us and rose from the dead. This is the true meaning of Christmas. I will now exit you out. Are you? And why is man? He's a what? <laughs> Say what? Nothing. I'm saying he's a wise man. Oh. Right. Show mommy your tummy. <laughs> Beth, Chris, pregnant. She's never seen you pregnant. Is for Eloise? Yes. Oh. See? A few more weeks. <laughs> I think we yeah, ought to right ride. here. I think we ought to ride her around on the donkey. Maybe we could make it yeah. that way faster. That's true. I'm waiting to slip and fall. Mary, you it should be it? sitting down. Yeah, I don't think it's very good though. No, I can't. You did.
You need to be potty trained soon, don't you? 